This is Paul and Sheila McLaughlin. I want to thank you for being interviewed. How did you know, in fact, I guess you could take it one at a time, uh, how did you know that God was calling you into missionary service? Well, I knew from I was a girl because I used to preach outside the shop door when I was 10 and didn't know anything. I'd shout, you'll be in hell if you're not saved. And so, and ever from then, I always wanted to be in church. I always was reading the scripture, talking to my friends at school. The teachers hated me. And so it was there. You know, the call of God was there. It's all I cared about mm -hmm. since I was about 10. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when mm -hmm. you have a, a belief system that dominates your life, whatever, like in Scotland, they believe in alcohol. This is their total life. It consumes our whole life. It dominates. It takes all the money. Uh, well, it's the same with a Christian. Uh, the gospel dominates his life. This is, his, what's, this is what he believes in. This is what he's convinced of. And uh, he dedicates his life to the service of, of God and the kingdom of God. That's all the best way I can explain it. We feel a bit just like the disciples when Jesus asked them, who, who, who did men say that I am? And they said two or three various things. And he said, but who do you? And he said, that we believe that thou art the Christ. And that's the same uh, response that we have. We believe that Jesus is the Christ. Amen. How long was it when you first received your call until you actually went to the field? Oh. Seven years. Yeah, seven years, yeah, at least. Seven years. Seven years, and the, it's, it's, um, it's one of those columns where you just carry on. Uh, until you see the vision fulfill, you carry on looking after your family, providing, going to church, doing your duty, so forth, until the thing becomes a reality. I think too that you have to be, if you're not available, God will never open a door. Mm -hmm. You have to do what you can do from the <clears> day <throat> that you know the Lord. If you're busy in His business, you're not thinking so much, where am I going to end, or where am I going to go? It's who will get saved today. And so when you do that every day, because it does consume you, then you know that God's going to open a door somewhere and lead you out. Amen. What advice would you give to somebody preparing themselves for missionary service? Well, I would say that in missionary service, you could have a nervous breakdown if you're not called. You might have one if you are called, but <laughs> if you're not called, stay home, you know. And I don't believe people that don't do it before in their own country can do it anywhere else. You have to do it where you are, college, school, whatever. It starts at home. Starts at the door. In hindsight, after you're on the field, what would you have done different, if anything, to prepare yourself for the mission field? I don't know. I don't think it's one of those things that walk not by sight, but by faith. And uh, it's put, take put one step at a time, and the vision becomes larger until it engulfs your life. That's, um, you, you walk by the Word, and you walk by the Spirit of God, you walk by going to church, you walk by circumstances, events, people you meet, opportunities that come along your way, and uh, you can see the direction, this is where we're going, until there's a fulfillment, really. Mm -hmm. And I think you can, you can prepare yourself as far as your position with God, that I remember being very shocked when I met a Christian that told lies and when people you trust <coughs> do your own. And so I really think maybe we were young and in that day that nobody supported you with anything, you just did it more than time. They didn't support you in time, money, and I'm not even sure that they supported you in prayer. But the thing is, when you're doing it, you can be shocked. So I feel nowadays, maybe 
young people are better prepared to not. Don't expect people to be the, what you are, what you feel they should be. It's not, your job is just to sow the seed and it's God's business to deal with people in that respect. And, and when something radical happens in your life, have, uh, there's five in my family, uh, three brothers alcoholics and mother and father of alcoholics. And yet I was the one that was, you know, picked, as it were. <clears throat> and when something radical like that happens, you know that you've got a call of God in your life and you go down that line uh, and you keep going until you see fulfillment. You know, you meet your wife along the road and you find a woman that's of the same mind, the same commitment, the same dedication, the same vision. And you commit your life both to it and lo and behold, miracles happen day after day, you know. Mm -hmm.